How's it going guys? Vlad here. Welcome to another Arduino episode. Um, today we're actually going to be looking at the Arduino Mini. So let's first quickly take a look at what the board consists of and then we're going to take a look at some of the devices and drivers you will need to actually control the Arduino to actually talk to it. Um, and um, we're going to load a simple sketch just to demonstrate um, how it functions but I mean you should be able to do pretty much anything with this guy as you would with the normal Arduino R3. So let's quickly take a look at the board so as you can see it's a uh, very small form factor so if I take my ruler right here you can see that it's uh, three centimeters and a fourth and width it goes almost to two so about 1.8 it fit, features the um, Atmega 328P microcontroller. Some of the older versions have the 168, the Atmega 168. It has a reset button, has a power LED. It has an LED for um, one of the digital pins. Um, obviously, all the circuitry required to run the Atmega 328, and that you can see in the data sheet. Um, what else? This is not the official version, by the way, but these are all open source um, hardware so you shouldn't have any issues with the non-official versions and by the way if you're looking to purchase one there's gonna be a link uh, on your screen right now so uh, that is as far as the Arduino goes now to get the software to be able to communicate with the Arduino you are also going to need one of these uh, which is a USB to TTL or USB to serial uh, transmission modules so here is one of them I got another one down here it's just a different chip that it's using so what pins will you actually need to talk to the Arduino so the most important ones are the RxD, the TxD um, the voltage and the ground the DTR pin um, I believe it's the it's the pin that pulls the um, chip low so that you would actually be able to transmit your uh, information your data across uh, so as you can see this particular um, dongle features a 3.3 to 5 volt switch so uh, in some cases you can have a 3.3 uh, voltage Arduino so you would actually need to switch this to 3.3 in order not to um, damage your circuit and if obviously if you're trying to talk with a 3.3 to a 5 voltage circuit you're just not going to be able to get the information across so I got a very simple header uh, the reason why I haven't soldered it onto the Arduino is because I'm not uh, planning to actually have it in the final project so one of the simplest solution is to just uh, leave it as it is while you're transferring the program so let's take a look at some of the drivers that you're actually going to need for this guy because it's not a simple plug and play solution like you would with the Arduino R3. Okay, so what you're going to have to do is uh, go to ftdichip.com uh, navigate to the drivers and VCP drivers what you're going to find is an array of different files depending on which operating system you're using so obviously in my case I got Windows um, so I was just able to download the setup execute file and uh, install it onto my uh, system. It's fairly simple. You just double click the setup and you should be able to just get um, check marks for your um, USB devices. In case you want a uh, different processor ar architecture setup, uh, depending on your system, once again, you can get um, different files. So once you have that set up, you should be able to uh, see the so let's take all right so once you've extracted and installed all of your drivers you should be able to open the Arduino IDE go into tools for well select the board that you're going to be using so in my case it's going to be a pro or pro mini 5 volt 16 megahertz with Atmega mega 328 pay attention to the different revisions and versions of these uh, of this particular board in your serial port you should be able to select a compact so if this is grayed out you have either and properly plugged in your Arduino 
or um, FTDI module or you have not uh, correctly installed the drivers or you may just need to reset the Arduino IDE for some reason it's uh, it didn't catch the first time that I've updated the drivers so let's take a look at the sketch this is the example blank sketch in the Arduino IDE so it just sets up pin 13 as the output and blinks it every 100 milliseconds so let's verify that and upload it onto the board so one thing I'm gonna show right now is the connections that I had made and the LED of course so let's take a look okay so as you can see the FTDI module has an LED uh, to indicate the power on the module uh, it has the following pins so DTR, RX, DT, XD um, VC and ground so what you're gonna have to connect DTR goes to DTR RXD on this module goes to TXD on the Arduino TXD goes to RXD so basically whatever this is reading uh, the Arduino has to be writing uh, the VC is your voltage and uh, the ground so as you can see my selector switch is in 5 volts and let's take a look at the Arduino itself so as you can see, um, I got all my pins connected onto the programming port. You have the power LED in the middle, which is uh, lit up at all times. And then you have the pin 13, which is blinking every 100 milliseconds. So once again, if you want to get one of these two modules, the links are going to be on your screen right now if you want to support the show. Um, so this Arduino, you should be able to do pretty much anything you can do with the R3. Obviously, you have to load the software through the FTDI, but that's um, something's got to give, right, if you get a smaller uh, controller. So if you've enjoyed the show, once again, uh, click the like button, subscribe, let me know what you think. Thank you very much. Bye.